love to steal, kill, and destroy. Hallelujah. He always has an intention to tear down what God wants to establish. But can I just tell you, there's a promise in the word that says no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Can I get a witness up in here? That's what God is and what the devil says. Hallelujah. The word of God shall never fail. Hallelujah. The Bible says his word concerning us will not return void, but it will fulfill the purpose whereunto he has sent it. How many believe this morning? I'm going to trust in the word of God. Hallelujah. It's going to be exactly what God says it's going to be. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Elder Thomas is going to bring one more selection. He's going to bring our message this morning. Is that all right? Amen. 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 We won't delay. Amen. It's on you, our elder. There's a songwriter that said, I don't know yes. about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I sing old hymns. <laughs> they had some power to it, man. The, the words in the song had some in them. You yes. know, yes, these days you can write a song and say Jesus three times and it's a hit. <laughs> you know, it's a hit. But uh, but back then that it took something. They were writing out of their relationship, out of their expression to God, not a shadow thereof. 
Right. It took it took going through something to be able to write Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound and how come on! It took a relationship to understand what that it saved a wretch like me. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. You can't tell me somebody wasn't spending time with God when they said, "I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears." Is sweetest thing I've ever known. This is it's relationship, man. And that's what we have to pursue is relationship with God. When you can pursue a relationship with him, then, then all the other things don't matter because your world is being shaped by the master. Amen. Come on, find the Bible this morning. We're going to look at the book of Matthew. <coughs> Bishop, I went out and bought a watch. Oh, That's what I did. I went out and bought a watch because I said to myself it'll make it a little easier <laughs> for me to stay on time and on task if I got a watch. Yeah, Matthew, what? Matthew, the uh, we're gonna look at chapter number twenty-six, and we're gonna look at verse number forty. Matthew, chapter twenty-six. We're gonna look at verse forty. I promise I won't be long today. Now I can officially say it and kind of guarantee that I got a watch. I got when I'm, when I'm about a watch, so I won't be too long before you here today. Amen. When you have it, indicate by shouting amen. Amen. The book said, Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took him, Peter, the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful, and were very heavy, and then said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, praying, and saying, O oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me? One hour. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. I, I, I just want to kind of pitch my tent, to be honest with you. Uh, we're just looking at that uh, 40th verse. He comes to the disciples and found them asleep. And he said unto Peter, could you not watch with me even one hour? So for a subject, just for the next five minutes, that's all I need. I just want to tell you, don't oversleep. All right, all right, sir. Don't oversleep. Now, obviously, this was a message better posed last week when all of our clocks jumped up by an hour. And all thanks to technology, we didn't have to set the clocks. They just stole that hour from us without even asking about it. And uh, it made us a little sluggish, some of us getting to the house of the Lord. But uh, regardless, the times are necessary that we have to shake ourselves and remind ourselves, don't oversleep. Uh, I found out, though, Bishop, that it's extremely easy to oversleep when you are tired. Uh, we're in the house of God, so is it all right if I tell the truth this morning? Is it all right if I confess? It? Can I confide in y'all this morning? Y'all ain't gonna go tell. Y'all gonna tell nobody are you this morning? Uh, I just want to. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, when my eyes open this morning, uh, the clock read eight fifty nine. Uh, I said I. I better move in a hurry if I'm going to make it to the house this morning. I, it was one of those mornings where you got to tell the kids, get in there, get your stuff up. Shut up. Get it. Get it. Get it. Stop bothering me about that. Get, right, right. get your shoes up. You got your shoes on the wrong feet. That was it. it was one of them kind of mornings because when I woke, I had overslept. Yeah. Uh, now, the funny thing is, I looked at my iPad, which I so trustfully believe in, to wake me in the mornings, and I discovered that the alarm had gone off. <laughs> 
Then it just simply got tired of ringing. <laughs> and I said to myself right then, see, this is how I know that there is a father and a creator somewhere because even though my iPad rung and I'm sure my ears heard, my body did not respond. I believe it took a touch from the master to be able to open my eyes. Now, now I may have woken up later than I like to wake up, but I can honestly tell you I believe that the master still will wake you up with just enough time to do what you need to do. Now, now, now y'all got to understand, I, I didn't have a convenient set of time, but I had some time. You see, now, I don't know if you've ever had a grandmama that had this phrase that time is wine. Up. Anybody ever had a grandma say that time, time is running out? We are living in a world where time is pressing on and, and sin is everywhere. Tell somebody to say time. It's running out. It's running out. Everything is happening in the world. To be honest with you, I'm a little concerned about the state of our country right now. I got to, I got to do some more investigation about Canada and other places that I can run to just in case stuff don't go right in November. I'm a little concerned. Y'all, time is running out. You see, you see, time is running out every which way. Time is running out. There's sin everywhere, all in the street. People are just shouting for the just things that you never thought you'd see are just happening. Oh, come on, am I the only one turning on the news every now and then? Man, you know the crazy stuff. There's sin everywhere, and it is a sign of the times that it is running out. Now, now Jesus was understanding this uh, constriction of time because he's had a, a ministry that has grown and has blossomed. And, and sometimes when your ministry grows and blossoms, not everybody is on your side. And, and most people are just trying to trip you up and they're trying to bother you. They're trying to mess up your plan and all this kind of stuff. And thus Jesus had the exact same thing that he didn't have to. And so finally he realizes that the people who are plotting against him uh, are beginning to come toward him. Now he knows this in the spirit that his time is running out. Yeah. Now, because he knows his time is running out, Jesus needs to get with the Father one last time so that he can have the strength that he needs to go through what he's about to go through with. Uh, oh, yeah, I believe that's the point right there for most of us as saints, that if we are getting ready to go through something, sometimes you just feel it in your gut. Oh, here we go. It's going to be one of them kind of weeks. But I believe instead of turning to the alcohol bottle, we ought to get down on one knee and say, Father, I need some strength to make it through the storm. I, I don't know what I'm getting ready to go through. I don't know the test, but I know that you'll make me able to stand. And so Jesus decided he needed to pray, and he wanted to get Gethsemane with his disciples. And he said, now, I want us all to pray, but instead of him standing and leading the prayer meeting with the disciples and, and praying fervently for an hour, Jesus left them by themselves. Well... Uh oh, I see. I got, I got to work that point for just a minute. That Jesus left them by themselves. Now, why couldn't he need the prayer meet? I've often wondered, I said, Jesus, that there must be some more strength in numbers. I mean, it's good to pray by yourself, but it's really energetic when you get other folk agreeing with you. Why couldn't he lead the prayer meeting? Well, well, I believe, saints of God, that Jesus was situating the disciples with just a taste of what they were going to have to do for themselves in just a few short days. And thank God we serve a master that's wise enough to foresee what we're going to go through and help us get prepared. You see, Jesus was about to go to the cross, Bishop, which means the disciples we're going to have to pray to the Father yeah. for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Not all the time in every situation will we see the hand of God working. Not in every circumstance will we notice his footprints in the sand. We serve the kind of God that strengthens us in an independence to be able to have a relationship with him that when the bishop is not present, when the deacons are not around, when the elders are not available, you can still call on 
the name of Jesus for yourself. Now, the problem with the disciples is that instead of taking the occasion to get closer to the Father, to be prepared for what they were going through, they decided to go to sleep. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to close, but I just want—I can't leave it there. I'm not, I, I don't want us to bad mouth the disciple. They was tired. They had gone with Jesus through the past couple of days through Jerusalem. It's been a real busy week, Bishop. They got here to town to palm trees and praises, and everything was good. And Jesus brought in his motorcade, and there was an, uh, an itinerary of things to do in Jerusalem. And, you know, there was a bodyguard, so they had to walk around in the tough all week long, and they had to support Jesus and catch folks from falling out when he was laying hands. They was busy all week long. They tired. They've been working for the master all week long. They were tired. I can, I can hear a certain people in my spirit closing to the end of their journey and the words that they say, I'm just, I'm just tired. I'd rather, just, I'd rather get some sleep, some rest. I am tired. This morning, situations and circumstances have constricted us on some people in this room, and it has made you tired. You, you, have you ever said this phrase right here? Now, don't worry if it's just me. I'm cool. Uh, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. Oh, that was somebody else? Oh, okay. I thought I thought it was just me. I just wanted... I, and, and every now and then, you just gotta sit down in that chair. Your children, they, daddy, daddy, just go on somewhere. Just... <laughs> Go on now. Go on now. I, I'm tired. I, I don't have the energy to be able to put in to you right now. I am tired. Has anybody ever been there? Have, have you ever cooked all day long and then finally you just, you're just tired? You, you've been out boiling along all day long and now you're just tired. And, and whenever you are tired, something comes along. Right. To take the rest of the little bit of the energy you got left. Come on, I know somebody with me this morning. And so, so these disciples were tired. I believe had Jesus led the prayer meeting, that he would have kept them up the whole time. I have no doubt of that. But Jesus wanted to test their resolve in the midst of you being tired of circumstances, tired of situations, tired of the enemy, tired of the troubles, tired of the trials, tired of it all, will you still pray? That's right, that's right. Jesus didn't tell them when he was coming back. He didn't tell them how long he was going to be gone. He could have been gone all night. He'd done that before. That's he right. left and stayed for a while on the mountain with, the, with God by himself. He'd done that before. Maybe we can get away with sleeping all night long. <laughs> Or maybe, maybe we can understand that we prayed out long. Maybe prayed 20 minutes, Bishop. I don't know. But when Jesus got back, they were asleep. Yes. They had let the pressures of this world and the fatigue of their physical bodies overcome the spiritual necessity that they would need to take on the task at hand. Yes. I believe that lets me know, my friend, that they were not quite in tune with how serious things were. Uh, if you are in tune with the fact if somebody said to you, you were going to die in one hour, for some reason, I believe your eyes would stay open. I believe that you would look around your circumstances. I believe you'd be more alert than normal because you are anticipating how serious the mode really is. Don't act like you ain't too safe. Y'all seen Friday uh, when Big Worm said, hey, smoke it at 9 o'clock. I want my money. Uh, around 8.45, smoke it, said. You seen that, Craig? Because he was anticipating something was about to happen. Ah, uh, church folk, we are out of tune with the Spirit of God because we are lackadaisical and we are carrying around in foolishness when the enemy is taking our nation by storm. But I came to wake you up this morning and tell you it's time that we wake up and get on our knees if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. To 
last two people say it's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to get down on our knees for our marriages. It's time to get down on our knees for our children. It's time to get down on our knees, not just for our circumstances, but for God to step in and bless us as a whole body. The disciples fell asleep, saints of God. They fell asleep at a time when they needed to be praying harder than they ever prayed. They fell asleep at a time where difficulty and calamity was about to befall them. And Jesus had to come back and ask. He didn't stay gone all night. He didn't stay gone for six hours. He said, y'all couldn't even stay awake one hour. for one hour. Yes, sir. Perhaps if Jesus had told them he'd be back in an hour, yeah. they could have stayed awake yes. an hour. Yes, sir. Perhaps they would have set their iPad <laughs> to wake them up in 45 minutes. Have you ever been there? Right. I got to be working 30, but let me set my alarm. <laughs> Yeah, let me just get 15 minutes. I ain't got to be there till. <laughs> and the problem with that is you got to understand that to be on time is to be late. <laughs> but to be early <laughs> is to be on time. <laughs> we have got, I'm closing up. We've got to be in a place where we can start getting early in the house of God. We've got to be in a place where we can start getting early down on our knees. We've got to get in a place where, just like David said, early in the morning will I seek you. We, we've got to get in a place where we can begin to make God the priority. You see, it wouldn't make a big difference if we got to the house of God early and slept to a service start than being at the house sleeping until it's time to go because the possibility is we might miss something great. Church, now is the time for us to be able to get in tune with what God is doing. If we can do that, then silly disputes won't enter in here and there because we'll realize how close we are to things going south. Yes, we don't have time for foolishness when things are going south. When, when trouble hits your house and the children are talking about playing, yeah, I don't have time for that because I'm in tune with how serious the situation is. Jesus said, I need you to pray. How long will you be able to stand? How long can we hear the word of God and be able to stand? Many of us are like children almost. But many of us are almost like that. I'm saying this and finishing out. And we're going to stand and we're going to pray for strength to move forward. But we're like children. We're like children. When I came in the door today, I said, all y'all sound shut. If I hear one word, I'm just going, ah, I'm going to let you have it when we get out of here. Now, they sing in the back now. Carry it on. Now, see, they don't know that the wrath is going to be out of here. So when we leave out of here, I'm telling you, that, all the way to the car. What? What? All I told y'all to be quiet. She, she ain't ready. I'm telling you, she ain't ready. She ain't ready. She ain't ready. I'm telling you, she, she has no idea right now how much trouble she's in. No. She ain't got no clue. That's how we are. We are oblivious to what is happening. And I'm not just talking about in our nation. I'm talking about what is the Spirit of God setting us up to do? What is the Spirit of God? What is going on in the Spirit? If we are missing that, we could miss out on safety that we need to have. Safety for our family, for ourselves, for our church, for our community. It's time to pray to get in tune with what God is doing. Stand to your feet this morning. We're going to pray for strength. Amen. Amen.